Agony, seen a year ago, seemed like it was going to be a great game. Is it really though? Agony has some glaring issues that might make you not want to purchase it. I played through a couple hours of the game and conducted my own research on it and tests to determine stability. So let me give you a heads up on what you're going to find in this frustrating game. Make sure you watch to the end so that you actually have an informed viewpoint as to why you probably shouldn't throw your money away on this one. So I'd say enjoy Agony for the Xbox One X 2018 review gameplay and is it worth buying? Because Lord knows I did not enjoy making it. These are going to be my first impressions of the game as I played quite a few hours through the crashes, glitches, before I finally got knocked back after an hour's worth of progress and rage quit. If you have seen any of the trailers for Agony or watch PewDiePie, it looks like a great game, right? I wanted to like this game. I wanted to love this game. I fired it up for the Xbox One X and immediately I got this strange noise. It's hard to explain, but it was a glitching noise. Here's a clip of it. I chose story mode and continued on. I began the first level and noticed there was really no prompting. There was a cutscene where you were obviously falling into hell, but that's about it. You started at the gates of hell and from there, for some reason, a demonic presence has taken a liking to you and is somewhat helping guiding you despite all the others who have fallen to the wayside. Honestly, I will finish the game, but at this point, nothing about the story makes any sense to me. Why has this demon taken an interest? Why should I care about it helping me? Why should I care about this dude since he's ended up in hell? I mean, the honest answer and the honest question is, the game really doesn't make you care about any of it. Usually I can go along with games like this, but for some reason with this particular game, it doesn't carry enough interesting elements to keep a person's attention. The mechanics of the game are clunky and broken at worst, and a chore to move through at best. And I'm going to be honest with you, this should have been probably like an alpha release. I am pretty salty that I spent $40 on this ridiculous mess of a game, but I will try to keep that saltiness to a minimum, as just to let you know what you're going to find. First, let's go over the audio glitches and get those out of the way. The dialogue will loop in the middle of speaking with anything which will cause this weird communication issue and you will lose the second half of anybody's statements. In fact, early in the game, you pass someone that knows you, which also just side note, this is directly in violation of what the game said just previously, which was apparently hell wipes away your memories. So they're already contradicting themselves within the first five minutes of the game. But anyways, moving on past that, you will pass them and they will shed some light onto why you were there. But because the audio restarts halfway through the sentence, you will have no clue what is happening or what he is even trying to say. And it's not just the NPCs, the actual main goddess, the demon who can shed the most info on the story and why she's helping you, she will have talking issues. Again and again, her same sentence will loop halfway through. On top of these audio issues, a glitching sound as mentioned previously can be heard throughout the game. Sometimes, however, it becomes deafening and overtakes all the other audio in the game. I uninstalled and reinstalled the game, and yet, there it was still. This leads to me to believe that the game itself has a coding issue, but these are just minor annoyances, right? You can kind of play through it or really just mute the game and ignore it. Well, it also has a nasty habit of making you get stuck on everything you come across. I would be walking around and I would immediately be stopped by a three inch tall ledge in the floor, the freaking floor. So I would have to jump. On top of that, it makes it really tough to traverse, more so because let's say you're running from like a demon or a boss or something and you get stuck on these ledges. It is infuriating because your character sucks anyways. He can't run at all. And then you get stuck on what is essentially, uh, I don't know, a step in the floor. It's just the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen. And it honestly detracts from the fun of the game because moving around becomes such a chore. If I had to give you an idea of what it's like, your character is like a freaking concrete fridge. That's, it's not easy to maneuver. What makes moving even more difficult is the fact that this game is extremely dark. 
there's a feature where you could turn up the gamma just like any other game, but it makes it look like absolute crap. I feel like they were using the darkness to sort of like cover up the graphical issues that are common, and this is actually a common practice in games, but they made it so dark, and that this coupled with the uh, the very small ledges that stop you, the random twig, or maybe a pebble on the ground, this makes it so difficult to traverse in the game that it's just, it's infuriating, it's frustrating, and it doesn't make you want to keep playing. What makes it even worse though is that, let's say you're going the right way in the game, you hit one of these ledges and you for some reason can't jump over it, you're gonna think to yourself, oh, I must be going the wrong way. Well, you're gonna turn around, but you were going the right way. I feel like this may have been a tactic to pad the runtime, but honestly, it just comes off as annoying as you must backtrack and then retrack in the same direction, not even knowing where you're supposed to go. The issue with backtracking and retracking creates a passive problem because I, this this has been combined with what I can only say is just a, a sheer lack of direction in the game. Usually a lack of direction in an open world environment or even a semi open world environment is a great thing. In this sense, the game is gonna be more semi open world. It's still very much a linear game, but it has very large areas. But these large areas really aren't interesting or fun to explore. They're just open space or they're just things that will kill you. They are once again frustrating as everything stops you. Your character can run pretty much about as far as a child with polio, and you've got zero clue as to where you're supposed to be going, so all of these things add together. Uh, ugh, it's, it's not good. There was clearly an attempt to help you out a, at least a little, as you can shoot blue lights out of your hand to guide you on the right path. But let me just say, you have to actually toggle in the menu. You have the option to make it tougher on yourself, which I call impossible mode, because you will not figure out where you're supposed to go, which you can only have a certain amount. And then you have easy mode, which it doesn't start off there. You actually have to toggle this where you can keep using these blue lights. And I actually do believe that is the only way you're going to get through this game. But these lights sound like a good thing, right? Well, would you believe though that they're pretty much useless in a sense. In one level, literally the lights kept telling me to go through a doorway and all that did was teleport me back through the same doorway. Again and again, it just kept making me go to this direction or just suggesting that I just go through the door again. After what is embarrassing about my eighth attempt at doing this, it was clear it was not working. Again, to harp on the lack of direction, apparently I was supposed to put skulls in blood and at no point was this indicated, which is, you would guess, Pretty annoying. On top of that, the lights have a nasty habit of getting stuck on loading points which exist in the middle of the map for some reason. So if you happen to be standing next to it or even past that loading point a little bit, it will go back behind you and go to that point, making you once again think you're going in the wrong direction. Now let's discuss the actual gameplay itself. Let me just say this, you are on your own. I had a tutorial toggle to give me a heads up and you know, apart from walking and grabbing things, it basically helped me zero. Now, not only does it not give you a walkthrough on how to interact with your environment, such as possession and a reliable sense of direction, but it also won't even let you know what you're supposed to be doing. And I know right now there's somebody on the keyboard saying get good, right? I have been playing video games now, I would honestly say for about 20 years. So you kind of pick up a lot of instinct, I guess you could say, along the way, because all games are kind of designed around each other. But I really haven't, I just don't know, I haven't encountered a game like this where you're left so much alone on everything and you're just expected to go along. Like, it's not even fun at this point. It's not fun to play when they won't tell you anything. You know, figuring out things for yourself is great. I don't feel accomplished in this game when I figure things out. I feel like, wow, this should have definitely been something that's mentioned in the be to begin with. You know, in Outlast, I felt accomplished when I figured something out. I felt like, oh, hey, yeah, man, I figured this out. This is great. This game, no, there is no accomplishment. There's only more annoyance. Let me harp on real quick the possession just to kind of give you a, a sense of how irritating it is. The first time you die, which will happen a lot, you go into possession mode as you are a free-floating spirit. You see a demon and you fly up to it to try to possess it as it is covered in this green aura, which is, you know, says to me, hey, obviously I'm supposed to possess this thing. So let me give you the first two issues. The first real major issue is it gives you the option to possess it or attempt to, but it won't actually let you do it. It'll go through the process, but you will never actually possess the demon. What's worse is it won't 
tell you why you can't possess it. It'll just knock you out and you're like, uh, okay. So then you fly around and you end up dying and then the goddess says something to you, but her <laughs> freaking audio loops halfway through so it doesn't matter. And on top of that, the actual possession is a mini game that requires you to keep the spirit in the center of the screen. Yet. Lo and behold, it never actually tells you that either. You're just kind of expected to figure it out and you need to keep the light in the middle of the screen. Of course, everybody's gonna know that, but who would actually think of this and not tell the player? Oh, but if you do wanna survive, by the way, speaking of continuing on with the whole possession thing, you have to possess something called a husk. Husks walk around with bags on their head and you'll spend the majority of the game passing these guys, not really paying attention to them, because there's no indicator that they're even useful. They're just babbling nonsense, and you're like, okay. And, uh, you know, there will actually be the people with the bags on their head. There will be people right next to them without bags on their head that for some reason you can't possess them and get a new body. It's, it, it doesn't, the in, uh, not incongruities, incontinuity, I don't know, whatever the word is, it's ridiculous. It's, it's kind of stupid to be honest. But anyways, so you'll take the bags off, even though there's no indicator that that's what's supposed to be happening. But apparently, when you do this, you can use their body if you died. But I just hope, you know, if you do play the game, you now know how to possess, you keep the spirit in the center of the screen. There is another thing that you can toggle, which is easy possession mode, which will keep the spirit in the screen for you so you don't have to do anything. I figured that out after screwing with the settings, so fun stuff. In one particular instance, I got stuck fighting a demon just to harp on the gameplay some more, and I had zero clue as to how I was supposed to proceed. After another embarrassing literal 10 times of dying, thank god somebody had posted a video on it. But there was no indication or even hint at what was supposed to be done to progress. Every demon I had encountered thus far literally just low level demon really had no option for me to attack them. It was always run away from them or outsmart them. And like I said, these are just base level demons, but apparently you're supposed to know that you're supposed to attack the 10 foot tall demon boss. There was, there was no heads up. There's no indicators on the screen. There was like, oh, make sure to burn them with fire. It was just, just run around and die a couple times. So I, to me, it's definitely poor game design. And I know I'm gonna catch some flack for that because there's obviously some people that liked Agony, but this game, because it's so poorly designed and because of major issues, I can only count it as poor game design. Strangely, I found the best help was honestly going to be the statues pointing at things. That is that the statues will point at a vague object or wall, so you can kind of figure out from there where, what you're supposed to do. I will give the game credit in the sense that it will test your intellect, but there is such a large amount of trial and error involved in the game, it begins to cross the line into unenjoyable. And next is just really how absolutely vulnerable you are. If I recall correctly, there were supposed to be guns and weapons in this game, right? So far, all I've been is a half-naked dude running around getting massacred by demons every few minutes. In fact, these encounters aren't even really scary at this point. You're literally walking around, you hear some footsteps, and boom, you get caught and killed. Then. It happens again, and again, and again. There's no fighting back, there's no defending yourself, and even in the in-game hiding areas, much like in Outlast, where you could hide in a locker and be safe, I have been pulled out of, you hide in a pile of bodies and hold your breath, or you hide in a wall and hold your breath and the demons are supposed to walk by you. I had one, it just walked by, ripped me out. Didn't even know I was there. It just, but, well, I guess it knew I was there, so uh, I'm not, it didn't see me, just, that's just what happened. So this brings up my last point, and this is what actually caused me to rage quit. The broken checkpoint system. To start with, as you know, there is no indicator of what anything is, so just as a heads up, the checkpoint system is a head with a bunch of arms coming out of the wall that you have to hit, and then the head gets pulled in by the arms, and that becomes your checkpoint. So you smack these, they save your place. Well, the problem is, is that, well this is where the problem begins, anyways, you move through the level, Move through cutscenes, move through puzzles, you'll find checkpoints every 10 minutes or so. But I had this issue, and it happened more than once. You would pass through 5 checkpoints, you would die, and it would literally send you back 5 checkpoints previous. As in the 5 didn't even matter. So this happened where it sent me through an entire level. Just 
back an hour. I was so mad. And with that hour's worth of progression gone, probably due to poor coding, I said screw it. I could forgive all of these shortcomings if it just weren't so boring. The creepy factor quickly wears off and is replaced by annoyance after about 10 minutes. As I said, with little to no idea or hint as to what you're supposed to be doing, you find yourself running around in what are perfectly crafted dead ends or places that just go back to the beginning, which I can really, like I said, only imagine Imagine are there to run the pad time. All of these come together to make what looks like a really cool game, but is actually just so repetitive and irritating that I wouldn't wish this on anybody to play. And this actually makes me really sad to say, because when I saw this game, I was so sure it was going to be awesome. I'm like, this is going to be a hit. It's going to bring back the horror genre. We're going to play this. It's going to be so much fun. And if you guys know this channel in particular, I love me some Dead Space. So maybe I was kind of overhyping it in my own head. Maybe that's my fault but I expected it to at least be fun to play. So what's my review and judgment on is it worth buying? Do yourself a huge favor right now and just go download Roblox or something. As buggy, frustrating, and boring as this game is, there's really not a lot to have fun with concerning its gameplay. So please, until they fix all the glaring issues, don't buy it. Not yet. I know that there's some sort of uh, update coming out. Somebody had mentioned to that. Uh, in the comments on Reddit, but, you know, I don't know, not yet. But that's just one man's opinion on it. Did you like playing it? And if you didn't, because you already made the monumental mistake I have, go ahead and rage it out in the comments, man, because that's kind of how I feel after spending 40 bucks on this. Maybe it gets fun later on, and as I said, I will continue to play it, and if it does get fun, I will make a follow-up video, kind of maybe rescinding some of the things, maybe just, maybe after five hours of playing, or six hours, maybe it gets better, but I kind of doubt it. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed my cautionary tale, and if you appreciated me giving you a heads up on this, uh, I would appreciate it if you would go ahead and smash that sub button for all probably three people <laughs> that are actually left at this point in the video, as I do believe this is my longest video I have ever made to date. Alright, well, that about does it for me, so I will see y'all in the next one.